Hi Chagoris, it's time to paint some white scars. Are you ready? Yep. Hell yeah, let's go. It's time to paint some white scars. We haven't done a tutorial in ages. Our last one was Azrael and Vashtor. And that was in ninth edition. And when we had no idea what was coming, it was the line, it was always the line. It was always the line. It was always the line. Um, but now here we are, um, a little older, a little wiser, and we're having another go at painting tutorials, which is well, lush. We say we, you are. Yes. I'm me. being the glorious camera operator. You are. Smooth. Um, we had a few comments when we did Leviathan of how to paint the white scars that you did. Mm. Uh, so this is going to be a tutorial on. Well, not a tutorial, more of a. How I paint white scars. Yes. Exactly. So, I'm going to disappear and you're going to tell the lovely people what to do. Okay, we're going to be painting some Infernus Marines from the Leviathan box set. You would have seen us paint Leviathan earlier in the year when we were crying, painting black for three hours, or at least the other Kieran was. Um, but I was having quite a good time, I'll be honest. I'm not entirely successful uh, in the challenge per se, but I did manage to get the scheme down really, really quickly. So as far as these white scars are concerned, the... My primary focus whenever I paint anything, it has to be quick, it has to be efficient um, in order to get some decent models on the tabletop as quick as possible. Um, we're leaning into um, a lot of cheats with this, um, so we're cutting a lot of corners, but that's how I like to paint anyway. Um, but yeah, it should be super, super simple. All of the bits you need are on the screen right now through the power of editing and magic. And then everything will be listed down below as well. They should all be available with our affiliate links just down below as well. So if you did want to help out the channel, you can always access them there, which is very, very nice indeed. So without further ado, um, we should start with step number one, and that is dry brushing. So with the first step, all I wanna do is get the base miniature coated in a Zandri dust uh, spray. So the GW rattle cans, I'm not a crazy big fan of, um, but Zandri dust is solid. Um, it's really, really good. It's not like chalky or bitty or horrible or whatever, or like streaky, um, it's got, I, I think I've gone through maybe like three or four cans now, um, and it's great. Whenever I've got like a lighter mini to start from, um, I'll always use this instead of white or off-white, um, just because you can either go darker or lighter, um, which really, really helps uh, trying to get that definition. Um, and with this, we're gonna be using Vallejo uh, model color ivory. Um, it's the best on the market, it's better than Wraithbone. Um, it's super, super good, the, um, the coverage in it is great. Um, so pick up your dry brush and we're gonna get dry brush in. Okay, so we've loaded up our dry brush with the Vallejo model color ivory. And what we're gonna do is quite a heavy dry brush on this. Um, normally you'll do it to pick up just like edges or something like that. And to be honest, like in any other case, I probably would, but with this, we'll, we'll see a little bit later on why this works a bit better. Um, but when we get that, streaking grime in there it will cover all of the recesses um so we don't actually have to worry that much and your infernus marine should look a little like this so that's our infernus marine all dry brushed up so as you can see there's quite a lot of like uh, recesses which still has that zandri dust in it so it will create that natural definition anyway um, and because there's a lot more flat uh, surfaces on the top, um, and also it's like a little bit easier to get with the dry brush, you've almost got that sort of natural gradient as well. Um, you might call this cheating, but I call it being smart. Um, so yeah, it looks like this. So with your bone color white scar marine, it now needs some gun casing, some red top knots, etc., etc. Um, corn red is always my go-to. Um, Kieran and I argue about this all the time. He's like, Mephiston red's the best. He's wrong. It's corn red because it's great and it's a bit dingier, dirtier, darker. Um, I, yeah, again, I use it for absolutely everything. As we've mentioned in our like painting top paints video, um, it's always the go-to for me. I absolutely love it. Okay, so with our corn red, we're going to pick out the gun casing, the top knots, and then the Aquila as well. Uh, you can, in uh, any other case, pick out some other details. You could do like a little lightning bolt like I've done on the sergeant here. Um, but yeah, it's totally, totally up to you. I think white scars tend to have quite a lot of heraldry anyway, like in scars or in, for example, on the Dreadnought, I did like some like spiky rectangles or just like different panels or yeah, totally up to you. 
the world is your oyster, but always use corn red because it is a gem of a paint. Uh, Kieran likes to use Mephiston red. Um, I like to use corn red because it's better. And after a um, streaking grind bath, it makes it look even darker, which I think is absolutely lush. Okay, so that's the corn red all done and dusted. So as you can see here, we've done the ammo casing. We've also done the Aquila. We've done the top knot. We've done the tiny little purity seal, which I totally forgot about, um, and we'll get to that later on. Um, and also, just as a little bit of a YouTube flex, because we're here now, um, I did do some triangles, and the triangles are amazing. With the reds on, it's time to get your metallics ready. Um, so with this one, you can go whichever sort of uh, metallics pick your fancy, I suppose. Um, traditionally, I would have gone lead belcher, but recently I've been using a lot of the uh, Duncan Rhodes tooth in paint what are they call two thin coats? That's what they're called. Kieran's nodding. Um, so I use surcoat silver. You can use lead belch or anything else that you you want. But to be honest, a lot of the shine um, and the metallic edge is going to be dulled down uh, in a later enamel step. A uh, little sneaky preview there. Um, but yeah, totally up to you. Okay, so let's find some metallic details. So we're gonna be doing all the bits on the armor casing. We'll do the uh, knees, elbows, uh, all of those kind of joints as well. Um, and maybe the sides of the helmet as well. Okay, so following that, we've got all the metallics down. So we've done the gun casing, the little barrels down there. Uh, we've got all of the little rivets or divots or whatever whatever word. I'm not into DIY, I don't know what it is. Um, and then we've also got the backpack bits as well. Um, and then obviously the teeny weeny bits on the helmet. So it's very, very cool. Um, we are, instead of doing a quick face-to-face, -face, I am just going to cover some bits in Skeleton Horde. So just doing the gun casing in Skeleton Horde at the moment. Um, so normally you want a bit of like a two-tone flamer anyway, so you want this to be a different colour. Um, you could do maybe like some other colours at the end, so like a black dry brush or something to sort of uh, pick out almost like burnout uh, to, towards, the, towards the end of the flamer. But I just quite, li uh, quite like this. It's just super simple, quite subtle, just like a nice colour change um, and works like a dream. Okay, so next up is the leather pouches and we're gonna be using Rhinox Hide. Again, totally um, up to you to decide whichever you want. Kieran's choice would probably be Burnt Umber. Um, I always end up going for Rhinox Hide. I think it's because it's got like a little tinge of red in it um, and it's almost like you crossed Burnt Umber and Corn Red and they had like a little paint baby and then it was Rhinox Hide. Kieran's laughing at me. Um, but yeah, no, I, I just think it's great. I've used it for absolutely everything and for leathers as well. I think it's pretty solid. Um, but yeah, go for it. You can probably thin this down a bit, um, just because when it does go over the uh, like the lighter colors, you'll have to do a couple of coats. I, I'll be honest, I'm super lazy when it comes to stuff like this. And so long as it's like thin enough, um, you can often get away with just doing the one. Um, so yeah, come back in a second and it should be done. Okay, so we've got some Rhinox hide just on the little pouches on his bottom. Um, and now, before I go anywhere else, I'm going to just quickly fill out um, with some Vallejo monocolor black on all of the scrolls and parchment. Um, it shouldn't take very long, so I will see you in a second. Okay, with some black on the parchment, we are Romeo done. So transfers is quite a big one with Space Marines. Um, generally, I don't tend to use them. So whenever I paint like the Chaos Wolves or anything, um, I tend to just do a lot of free-handed stuff. But with White Scars, you can with the like the red triangles and bits as we've already done. Um, but the 30K, so like the, the Horus Heresy transfer sheet is amazing. Uh, when I bought it, Kieran was like, why would you spend that much on transfers? And initially I was like, shut up, Kieran. Um, but I bought them anyway, and they are just phenomenal. I now own the Night Lords, the White Scars, and the Thousand Sun transfer sheets, because I just think they're excellent. They really, really are great. Um, there's loads of options on there. They're not the generic, like, I, don't, I really don't like the yellow in the White Scars, and everything's a bit too, like pristine and clean and yeah, not my bag at all. Um, so in this, we're gonna be using the Horus Heresy transfer sheets and I really suggest you do too. When it comes to transfers, always make sure that you follow the correct process. That does include using Microsol and Microset. Um, they are 
a bit of a strange dark magic when it comes to transfers and the application in general. Um, I think, to be honest, you can follow this as a tutorial, but we'll probably end up doing like a separate one as well, um, just because it's such like a important step, I think. Um, whenever you go to use transfers, I remember when I first started doing Warhammer a few years ago, I was like, oh, it's fine, I'll just use some water. Stupid mistake, wrong, shouldn't have done that. Um, but yeah, Microsoft and Microset are gonna save your life um, and they are very, very important indeed. Okay, so first up with the transfers, we're gonna be looking at the bottle of Microset and everywhere where we're gonna be applying the transfers, we're just gonna slather it all on. Two. And three. And then we are gonna take our transfers and go to town. So we've got our first transfer here, I'm just gonna stick it on right there. We're gonna to need to wait for these to dry for about 10, 20 minutes um, before we can go on with the microsole. So we're just gonna leave that one there, do the others and then come back in a bit. Okay, so step number two of the microsole microset uh, phase, we're now jumping into Microsol, which is the second step. I'm gonna douse this cotton bud in Microsol, give it a little dab, and then all I'm gonna do is just dab the transfer so it sticks down like this. We have microsold, we have microsetted. Now it is time for the enamel step. This is where we undo all of the hard work we've put in. It's also my favorite step. Um, I don't tend to use loads of streaking grime anymore, but there was a good maybe 18 months where this is what I did with every single one of my miniatures. Um, it's a phenomenal product, streaking grime. Um, it gets a bit of a rep as like a cheat code or whatever. That's exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. Um, you can use it sparingly. You can use it in this case quite heavily. Um, but the most important thing to know is that because it's enamel based, we will be taking some of it off and we'll essentially be pulling it in the recesses and like staining a lot of the, the paint that we've already applied. Um, so with this, you'll need your streaking grime. You'll also need some cotton buds as well as some, uh, What's it called again? Isop Mineral spirit. Mineral spirit or white spirit or... Uh, odorless thinner. Odorless thinner, that's it. Oh, I couldn't think of the word. Couldn't think of the word or phrase or whatever it's called, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you'll need those three. They're sort of like the holy trinity in this sort of process. Um, they're really gonna come up clutch. Um, but the most important thing is streaking grime. Um, I tend to choose AKs because I quite like like the dirty green tinge it's got. Um, so like Ammo Mig um, have got more of like a solid brown um, tone to it, which again is like a really, really great product. Um, but for me, AK just ticks all the boxes. Okay, so now we're on to the weathering step. So you've got your bottle of streaking grime, you've got your old tatty brush, and literally we are dousing this, this, this poor marine. Look at this, getting them all dirty. We're gonna, gonna, gonna hide all of those nice details that we've just done in mud. Look at this, what a mess. What a mucky pup. But all we're just gonna do is cover the entire miniature and then we're gonna wait for it to dry. Okay, so we've got our odorless mineral spirit and we've put it into this tiny little Petri dish. Um, and what we're gonna do now is take a clean cotton bud um, and just douse it in that. And now we're gonna roll it up and down and just take off the main layer or well, the main initial layer anyway, um, of streaking grime. So as we can see, it's already pulled in all of the recesses. So all we're doing is just taking off that first layer like this. This is just one leg already and it's already made the world of difference. Um, I love streaking grime to death. I'll be honest, I've, I got to a point, I became quite reliant on it and I used it for literally everything. Um, so I'm trying to lean away from it now. Um, but as you can see, just like looking at the bottom half of the miniature already, like the difference is, is crazy in comparison to what it was before. But I'm a big fan. Okay, so streak and grime step is done. Um, as you can see, it's very dark, very dingy. That off-white has really become 
um, dulled down to the max now. Um, but we have got quite a lot of um, flat surfaces that seem to shine a little brighter than the uh, the recesses, which is great and absolutely oh, throwing it around. So now we've got our heavily contrasted grim and gribbly white scar. This is like the easiest step, and that is the lenses. For this step, we're going to be using two paints, one of which is the white, and the other one is the ink. For the white, we're going to be using Bold Titanium White by Pro Acryl. This is my favourite white to date. Um, a lot of the examples from like GW or Vallejo or whatever, I find like are a bit chalky and the consistency just isn't that good. Um, and then on top of that, we're also going to be using the Ink Tensity Ink uh, from Scale 75. These are fantastic. So I've got the uh, blue, I've got the purple, I've got the green, I've got the red. Um, they just work across the board. They're phenomenal. And I think as far as that sort of like OSL uh, style, I suppose, you want something that's really uh, like translucent, but still got that really deep saturation as well. Um, so yeah. Okay, so with our freshly grimed uh, white scar, which is very exciting, uh, we are now gonna do the lenses. So starting with the white paint, um, we're gonna go into these lenses just here and pick out everything in there. This might be quite messy. I know that I did this like a true pro. Um, but, um, if you do end up going like that, like that, if you, if you do end up messing up slightly, just wet your brush slightly, either with your tongue or with water or whatever, and then just reapply it almost. Just making sure that it's got a nice earring coverage before we go and use the ink. Okay, with the white lenses all dry, it's time to use the Inktensity ink. Uh, we're just gonna start by covering all of the white all over again, which seems a bit insane, but that white gives us such a nice base um, to sort of pop from. Um, this is gonna be crazy messy, um, which I can already see. So again, similar to the white, just clean your brush and then just tidy up some of those mistakes. And the best thing about smudged red on white is that it looks like glow. So what initially turned out to be a mistake, you're actually sort of cheating and getting OSL as well, which is remarkable, really. And then when you're Red is almost dry. We're just going to pop that white back on in the center. It's like a little highlight. Again, don't be too precious about it. Oh, like a splodge there. Love that. Um, just going to tidy this one up again. Yeah, don't be too precious about it because we're going to do most of our tidying in a second with the ink again. Um, so we're just going to fill that one out. A little more. Excellent. Okay, so we're still in the ugly step. We're getting there, but we're still very much in the ugly step. Okay, so going back in again, we're going to start to paint all the edges of the lens so we can start to see that white blob take shape. So just in the recesses there. Make sure to get yourself a nice thin brush with a very good point because it's going to help out immensely. And then just as a last little step, what I've done is thin down some of the ink. So I've got maybe one part ink, three parts water. And I'm just going to almost like wash slash glaze around the edges of the eyes. Again, cleaning up where necessary. And there we have it. That is our grim dark white scar all done. And that is it. That is how you paint white scars in less than 10 steps. I don't know. It's really quick. It's really, really quick. And um, so you would have seen on my other white scars, the basing texture paste 
whatever you want to call it. Um, so to be honest, there's not really a lot to it. I just use a lot of watered down Agrelin Earth on mine. That is a texture paint from GW, but I really like the color and um, they come in quite big pots. So if you water them down, they go, they go for miles, which is great. Um, you can do whichever color you want, which is lush. Um, and obviously being that sort of like dirty off white, color is sort of like a base for the white scars and um, you can do whichever you want so you could go like uh like a cityscape like uh, deep gray uh you could go like forest if you wanted to you could even go um the plains of trigoris if you wanted to um but yeah it's all very fun indeed but yeah um as far as that's concerned um i would love and kieran would also love who's also in the background looking at me and has been since we've been doing this uh, from the start um what you thought of this tutorial because we would love to do some more and um, we've obviously done an insane amount of schemes over the last year um, and we'd love to do some more which is uh, which is lush so yeah let us know what you liked what you didn't like what you thought might work better uh, have you have you painted white scars before have you used any of the products that we've said uh, for today as well um, but let us know follow all of our affiliate links and a big 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 thank you to all of our patron and youtube members which are going to be flying down the screen um, and obviously a huge huge thank you to you watching give us a like give us a comment give us a subscribe and we'll see you in the next one